from where you sit. On this episode of The Trading Bell, I am joined by uh, the chairman and the CEO of BK Group PLC. Now, BK Group PLC has successfully completed sale of 7 billion shillings rights, paving way for its cross-listing on the NSE. In fact, they join Uganda's Umeme as the only uh, regional firm cross-listed on the NSE. So joining me today is Diane Karusisi, the CEO of BK Group PLC, and Mark Holtzman the chairman of BK Group PLC to tell us more. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you both with us. And of course, this is a momentous occasion. It's the first Rwandese firm to have been listed on the NSE. First of all, I want to start by asking you why you chose the NSE specifically. And uh, I'll start with you, Mark. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, for us, our investors uh, who love the Rwanda story, the tremendous growth that's happened under President Kagame, the absolute transformation of the economy into a financial sector, a, a transportation and logistics hub, uh, a, a technology hub. Uh, but investors, major firms in New York, London, and elsewhere internationally draw great comfort from the liquidity on the Nairobi Exchange, yes. uh, which it greatly enhances our listing by being here, uh, as well as the Western-style custodial services. Uh, I will say that we have had the warmest, friendliest, and most hospitable reception here today, and uh, we feel like we're in our second home. That's fantastic. Dan, would you like to also add something to that? Yeah, I, I think that the vision has been uh, uh, set out by our leaders uh, through uh, integrated East African markets, capital markets, trade, and business. And uh, it was very easy for us because the infrastructure is there. Uh, we've been uh, very supported, highly supported by the regulators. <laughs> Uh, Kenya Capital Market Authority, the Nairobi Securities Exchange. The process was very smooth and speedy. We got all the approvals. And, and we really believe we are now implementing the vision of our leaders. And we are offering, uh, again, East Africa community as an asset class. We believe we are a good, a strong East African uh, company. And we want to offer investors in Kenya and across the world uh, opportunities to invest uh, in East Africa. Okay, so when we of course talk about this listing, what is it that shareholders can expect then or to come from this, Mark? First of all, increased liquidity. Mm -hmm. The daily turnover on the Nairobi Stock Exchange is 50 to 70 times uh, what it is in Kigali. And it's no criticism of Kigali. Kigali is just a newer emerging frontier market. Uh, that's why, as Diane indicated, the impetus and the inspiration by our policy leaders to uh, further integrate economic cooperation uh, makes it natural that we're here in Nairobi. Okay, all right. And uh, what are your key expectations uh, through this uh, cross listing? Diane, you can take so, that. So we, we are looking to uh, increase uh, the liquidity for, of our stock. I think this will unlock a lot of value for existing shareholders. But also, uh, we want to, exp to give Rwanda as an exposure to all uh, investors set up to trade uh, on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. I think they are here because they want to uh, take opportunities of, uh, in, in the East African market. And having uh, a company that is uh, you know, a flagship and uh, a blue ship in Rwanda will be an opportunity for them. Okay, now when we talk about the Rwandese financial sector, you know, a lot of numbers do come forth when it comes to cash loans that have been authorized, like uh, according to Minkoffin in 2011, it rose 66% as compared to 2006. So there has been growth that has been noted. But currently, what is the status of the financial sector in Rwanda and what, what are the factors most affecting the growth of that particular space, Mark? Well, let me first start by saying that we listed in 2011. Our share price since has uh, almost tripled in local currency and doubled in dollar terms when, if you factor in our dividend payment as well. Uh, by, uh, by being here and by having raised the uh, capital in the secondary offering, and by the way, it's the largest equity capital raise in Rwandan history. So Diane and I are especially and additionally proud of that. Uh, we have more resources now to deploy in our market to increase lending, to build our insurance business. Insurance penetration in Rwanda is just 2%. Uh, it's, it's at the very infancy, uh, and we're the largest insurance company now in the market, but still starting from a tiny base. So these additional resources will allow us to significantly build that business. 
And then we're in the process of forming the, the, the blue chip capital market advisory and brokerage business in Rwanda through BK Capital. Uh, and lastly, we have a tech business, a tech hub, uh, which is innovating new solutions for farmers, for agriculture. Uh, uh, agriculture is 30% of the Rwandan economy, but only 6% of bank lending. And we now have tools to facilitate uh, greater lending and participation in the growth uh, sectors of the yes. economy. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of similarities when you talk about Kenya and Rwanda in terms of insurance penetration, because ours is also quite low relatively, especially when it comes to youth and when it comes to the informal sector, as well as when, it, when we talk about agriculture. So what are some of the greatest challenges then that you face when you try and penetrate all of these sectors and create greater awareness within the Rwandese population, Diane? Yeah, I, I think it, our markets are quite similar, although the, the Kenyan market is uh, much more deep and, and developed than our market. Uh, we believe technology is going to be the game changer. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at uh, penetration of financial services, not necessarily banking services, it's quite high because now people can transact. I think in, in Kenya, pe people transact with M-Pesa and the like. Yes. And we believe insurance has to get a way to uh, sell its services through uh, a mobile phone. Again, uh, we've taken that step, I think, like Kenya has done also. We believe uh, if we have the relevant services uh, for our people, but also the right channels, and which are affordable, etc., we'll make sure we'll, uh, this will help penetrate the market and increase the, the numbers in terms of penetration for insurance services and also banking services. Okay, when you talk about integration of technology, as you've mentioned, M-Pesa, of course, Safaricom having over 29 million, uh, you know, customers of Kenya using that service, accessing their various services, of course, it's massive. So does Rwanda have uh, any sort of counterpart to that? How is the, um, when it comes to like Bank of Kigali, for instance, apps and things like that, wh wh where are we with that uh, on that front? Yeah, so, so we, we don't have, you know, a, a big company like Safaricom in Rwanda. We have a number of telcos, two uh, major telcos that have pretty much 50, 50 uh, market share. And we position ourselves as the largest bank in, in the country to support uh, both uh, telco companies. And we are fully integrated with those. We support their uh, uh, services and, and their products. But also, uh, we, also we are all in the process of uh, uh, deploying our own uh, electronic wallets. And we believe it will add a lot of value to what the telcos are already offering. And uh, beyond uh, the, the remittance product that telcos are offering currently in Rwanda, we are going to give opportunity uh, to our clients to be able to borrow and to support their small businesses in the informal sector. And we believe this is going to be a game changer in Rwanda. And okay. because there's yes. not a dominant player, mm -hmm. such as like, here in Kenya yes. with Safaricom, uh, we believe the market is wide open. Mm. And the advantage that we have as a bank and a financial institution, let alone the largest in the country, is that we can do more than just transact uh, digital payments. We can offer a whole host and suite of services, even more so than a telco can do. So while the telcos are sometimes our partners, they're at other times our competitors. And you know, it was said uh, by the head of global banking strategy at McKinsey that banking will change more in the next 10 years than in the past 300 years. And we believe that technology is the great leveler. And it, 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 it's also scary because yes. it means that an upstart can come into the market and dominate. But True. thanks to the leadership provided by Diane and an amazing team at Bank of Kigali, we are convinced that we will not only retain but grow our position in the market. Okay, fantastic. And Mark, as we talk about the technology, of course, you know, blockchain has been talked about widely, especially integrating it into the banking system. And how far do you think we really are from incorporating that into the African space and especially when it comes to Kigali? We are just at the first earliest initial stage, mm. which is so exciting for us because, um, you know, you, yesterday we hosted a board of directors meeting and we brought our board down to the fourth floor in our building, which Diane created as a d digital factory. And we have uh, 30 young men and women that are working in squads and teams. It feels more like a Silicon Valley tech incubator than it does a bank. Uh, and we even created a, a kitchen, a more casual dress environment. And Informal. These yes, and these young people, they come in and they're so inspired and they have solutions. But what Diane has done, which is most interesting, is she has set specific deliverables. So every week to 10 days, each of the squads or teams 
have to come up with a practical application for our business. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it just goes to show you, as I said earlier, that the point of entry, the barriers to entry are so uh, reduced now because of this great level uh, of technology. And that's why we are convinced that the resources that we raise by cross-listing here in Nairobi uh, will enable us to be uh, incredibly competitive and also a, 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 a trail setter uh, for the future. We've seen that intra-African um, trade and intra-African um, uh, cooperation has been seen as one of the future ways for us to grow, not just through outside funding, but within ourselves. And you've, of course, cross-listed on the NSC. So what are your thoughts when it comes to the banking sector correlating across the region and the future for that? Do you see it as positive? Where are we and what are some of the things we need to do more in order to strengthen that bond? Yeah, I, I think uh, this our step of cross-listing is already giving uh, exposure to the Rwandan market and the Rwandan uh, banking industry to Kenyan fund managers. I think this is the first step. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we, are, we are working with many banks in the region. We need to you know, integrate more systems to facilitate uh, our people sending money across the uh, border. Uh, it's already happening. We believe that is also going to uh, boost trade and business in our region. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we need more human movement, which is happening with a single uh, East African visa. We can now travel as a Kenyan citizen or Rwandan citizen only with your ID. You don't need a passport. So all of this is going to create relationships, and these relationships will uh, uh, also create business partnerships. And we believe with all of that, uh, all these initiatives that are, are taken by our government, but also our business people and our young people, uh, we are going to see more business and we are all going to grow together as a, as a region. Okay, I would add yes. that uh, we have only 26% banking penetration among adults in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So we have so much growth in our own backyard. So when you talk about regional integration, I do think that what we're doing here today, the regional integration of our, of our trading opportunities and uh, the partnerships that exist among our exchanges is very important. I think that will only grow and facilitate. But in terms of, of the idea of us competing outside of Rwanda, we have so much to do in our own backyard to grow our banking business, our insurance business, our uh, capital markets business, uh, that we see a laser focus there as the national champion, as the largest bank with a 33% and growing market share. Uh, and, and, and the only of the major banks, that's a fully Rwandan bank for Rwandan, serving Rwanda in Rwanda, uh, we, th we think that we have a very pivotal uh, role to play in, in our own domestic market. True, true. And uh, when you talk about that integration, of course, and you say that you've opened a sort of channel so as to facilitate more of that happening, uh, let's talk about uh, the shareholders, of course, for Bank of Kigali. I've seen international investors are uh, um, you know, taking up about 14% of that. Majority is uh, uh, the government of Rwanda itself, I believe. No, I think those numbers are uh, a little different now. Okay. So, in fact, the government reduced their position because mm -hmm. they didn't subscribe in the, uh, in, in the, in the, the uh, secondary offering. So where do we stand offering. now? So I will tell you that, that, that uh, the majority of our investors uh, are, are uh, uh, not counting the Rwandan Social Security Board. Yes. Uh, are, are international. Okay. Now, I've been an emerging markets banker for 30 years, uh, working on three continents. And... This is a very normal and expected uh, development. As, as Rwanda, as a country and an economy gets wealthier, our domestic capital markets will grow. But still in the first decade or two of the life of any international emerging stock exchange or market, it's driven and supported by foreign investment. And without uh, naming specific shareholders, because that's not uh, appropriate or a protocol, yes. I can tell you that one of the three U.S.-based fund managers with over a trillion dollars in assets has taken a significant position. Uh, our, our investor base is very prestigious and prominent, and it reflects the desire of, of many people in the international investment community to want to bet and invest on the future of Rwanda, Inc. And if you want to do that, the national champion, the most liquid and uh, 
heavily capitalized uh, local security is BK Group Bank of Kigali. Okay. So, and as we talk about, of course, international investors taking up major chunks of uh, your Bank of Kigali and other, other businesses as well, what are some of the greatest factors that would then affect them uh, being there long term? What are some of the factors that need to be in, in place so as to maintain this relationship, Diane? Yeah, I, I think, again, it, it's all about the growth opportunities that Rwanda offers. Mm -hmm. uh, and being listed, being the only Rwandan company listed on the Nairobi Secu Securities Exchange, I think we are the only proxy to someone who wants to, for someone who wants to invest in the Rwandan story. The story has been uh, fantastic. Over the past 25 years, we've seen transformation in all sectors. And uh, people who've been to Rwanda, when they come and they see us, they really amazed and they want to invest in Rwanda and we tell them if you want to invest in Rwanda BK is you know the, the best proxy and and for them again uh, Rwanda is at uh, the early stages of its development and the dev development is is, uh, is not a ma it's a marathon it's mm -hmm. not a sprint and people see uh, the bank uh, supporting this de development over the next decade or two decades we believe uh, as, as Mark said uh, when you look at our investors base Many of them are there for the long term because they see opportunities uh, for the long term. And uh, as Mark said again, we are diversifying across many business lines in the financial services. We have banking, we have insurance, we have technology, we have also investment banking. And these are not uh, businesses that can grow overnight. You True. really need someone who invests for the long term. And we've ha had these conversations with uh, our shareholders. Mm -hmm. And of course, we still want to create some pool of liquidity for people who want to trade and, and get a, a good return. And uh, as we are delivering uh, very good uh, returns to investors, I think we'll sh uh, see a lot of um, uh, movement in our, on our counter in Nairobi. So I've seen you both mention the Rwanda story quite a bit. What are some of the key milestones that you've seen in this growth trajectory that you have particularly um, positively influenced by to keep on working? As you say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. What are some of those key milestones that you've noted through this um, you know, growth process that has kept you going, Mark? It's the culture of the country. Mm. Um, it's absolutely unique, not only in Africa, but anywhere in the world. It's the only emerging market in my 30 years in this business where there's a complete absence and elimination of corruption. There's total transparency, and there is also the prospect for tremendous growth. Mm -hmm. When you combine all of those things, and you see the earnestness and the dedication and the commitment, uh, not only in the business community, but among the public servants, and all of this stems from the culture that was created by President Kagame. And he set the tone, he set the standard. Now, investors draw great comfort that it's been institutionalized. Uh, and it's, it's, the, it's the most unique opportunity uh, in, in, in the world uh, for, 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 for such a convergence of, of influences to come together. The other item I would like to add is that Diane and I are particularly inspired by the fact that nearly half of our employees bought stock in the secondary offering. So mm -hmm. we formed an, an ESOP, an, an employee stock ownership plan, uh, and it's, it's been amazing. The reaction's been absolutely incredible. So everyone uh, in, in the bank, in one way or another, has skin in the game. Okay, so it's, um, it's brought together a lot of people within. And something I heard you say as we wrap up that caught my eye was the fact that there's transparency, there's lack of corruption. And as we know, that is quite uh, a you know, highly debated and grappling issue that a lot of African countries are dealing with. So what, I what, what do you think uh, is the greatest tool that can prevent this uh, corruption taking root in any institution as, as you've seen um, it's being very much a lack of an issue when it comes to Rwanda. So what would be one of the key things that other countries need to ensure are in place to prevent this from taking over? Yeah, I think it's, it's all about leadership mm -hmm. and, and walking the talk because everyone speaks about corruption and mm. all measures to, to uh, uh, fight corruption, but you have to put these measures in implementation and in practice. And this is what our government has very successfully done. And as a result, now Rwanda is ranked am among, amongst the most transparent country, best countries in Africa to do business in. And this has resulted into business growth in major sectors, hospitality, uh, transport, airlines, etc. And, and this is a, the right foundation for, on, on, on which uh, Rwanda is building its, its economy. 
and uh, it's not difficult to do. You just need you know, the right leadership and, and people with the right mind and the right uh, heart. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today on The Trading Belt. Thank you. Well, that was Diane Karusisi, the CEO, and Mark Holtzman, the chairman of BK Group PLC, telling us about a lot of things, including, of course, the prestigious listing of the Rwandese firm on the NSE, the first Rwandese firm to do so, as well as touching on a lot of issues surrounding the Rwandese financial sector and other sectors within the region as well. That's it for this episode of The Trading Bell. Of course, you can keep up with us via our social media handles appearing on your screen. Until next time, my name is Malika Kazia. Thank you for watching.